Where the f do we go from here? Oh no. We're not gonna make it out of here. This is Ted, I'm Jim, and this is my dog, Buck. We've explored over 10,000 miles of the world's most brutal terrain. Now, we have the two-week, 140-mile canoe trip in the Tomogamy backcountry. We're gonna go visit a friend of ours named Alex Matthias, who's an Aboriginal elder that lives in the bush. We got an incredible route coming up. Hopefully we didn't bite off more than we can chew. There's been some forest fires in the area. Hopefully we can stay clear of those. God willing, we should be done this trip in 15 days if all goes well. So basically our adventure is starting right now. All good. Wet socks on, ready to tackle the day. Uh, good boy. Good boy. You're so silly. Buck's upset that I'm not petting him still. So that coffee is about ready. I'm trying to just consistently spin. Few, if any, grains. There we go, cowboy coffee. No fussing around, quick, fast. <sighs> Delicious. Anyways, me and Ted are about to push off finally today and begin a never ending string of portages. Yeah! So, you know, we're here right now, and then we're gonna paddle here. We have a 675, a 715, a 300, and then basically an 1800, 1785. These are all meters, so it's a little, the meter's a little longer than the yard. I know we're panicking, but we gotta get here by day seven. Jim lied to me and told me this was gonna be an easy trip. Um, what an asshole. I did. I'm like, yeah, just zip, zip, We're going to pack light and we all have lots of time to do the other little projects we need to do, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, sure, bud. Right, lots bud. Lots of time for fish. Okay there, bud. Are you trolling? Yeah. This this looks like the best oh, spot. Oh, I got one. Good size. Hairpin turn here. Oh, you're on a log there. I'm not. Another hairpin corner here. Like, how many horn pipers have we gone around here? We just paddled past this. This is where I casted before. No. Dude, we just paddled in a circle. Dude, that's not possible. How could we paddle in a circle? This is not an island. Oh my god. We just paddled in a circle around the f Island. <laughs> what happened is we're supposed to go straight through there and then turn right, but I thought we were already there and this was the narrow and then we turned right here. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. Like tripled man. our distance. So we just came across these cattails. If you were ever in a pinch, you can actually pull the roots up and the tubers of these and pound them out and make like a starch or a flower. But uh, the other thing that they're really good for is a fire starter. You know, if you break them open inside, when uh, especially when they're later in the season and they're a little drier, you spread this all out and you can wrap a piece of birch bark and tuck that all in. And that'll often take an ember from a ferro rod or if you want to transport fire, you put a little coal in and it just smolders for a long time. You know, you can get a starch out of the roots, but you can also just eat the stalk. When they're good here, you want the inner section. So you peel all this off. So it's much wider in this section. That's what you're looking for. And it's pretty good. It has uh, the texture of, say, a sugar cane. Tastes kind of like celery. This trip is like bushcraft in motion, you know? Um, we're moving from one spot to the other. We have to know serious outdoor skills, paddling, lighting fires, understanding species of mushrooms. And it's kind of nice when you're out here when you know what berries are safe and what aren't. Things could go wrong out here. Me and Ted could dump in the middle of a big lake, lose our, our, our communication equipment and our food. And before you know it, we'd uh, be an ant larva um, on like a six day bushwhack out of here. Those ant larvae are actually loaded with protein, so it's good to know. I'm really glad I don't have to eat that right now, though. <laughs> Finally got all geared up, unloaded. We thought we had the portage correct, and we just came back, and it looks like it leads to some old ATV trail, and we don't know if it was the right way. We might have unloaded at the wrong spot, and we're already behind schedule, and it's pretty freaking stressful. 
Okay, well here's the fork in the trail. One goes that way, and one goes that way. This one is flagged here. You know, that's something to look for when you're in the bush on crown land like this, is flags. And then you can see down this trail that it's a gong show and that there's trees down all over it. We don't even know for sure if this trail even goes to the lake uh, and, and it's probably, with all the trees, it's just probably hasn't been used for ages. But uh, decisions, decisions. Ted? Yeah? I think maybe we follow it to the right and then pick up the trail and that there's another portage trail. <coughs> Not easy to do with that bag. Pounds in it, right? Jim's running into uh, some trouble here. Are you double packing? Good way to rest is on a log. You drop your first pack and then you sit on the log and that takes the weight off your shoulders. Oh, it's hard, eh? Oh my God. me. Oh, that sucks. Uh, hurts so good. Uh, <laughs> come on, baby, make it hurt so good. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. Honey, it hurts so good. Where the f do we go from here? Oh no. Maybe we're supposed to take the portage to the left. We're not gonna make it out of here. Low lying swampy creek area here. There's otter s all over the place here and it stinks. When Buck catches a deer fly, he swallows it. And you can even kill one and give it to him and he'll eat it. He doesn't like them. From here, I don't really even see where we can get through. We can cut down a very short walk away, but it's definitely too low to take that one. So, you know, we're gonna take our risks, try to somehow drag through this sloppy mud into the next lake, but it might turn out to be a bad decision, but I sure hope not. Oh, that's a lot of mud. When the going get tough, the tough get going. So hopefully for tough people that works out, but me and Ted are f <laughs> <laughs> So we're paddling through all those lily pads and it was getting shallow, getting shallow, had to drag, and now we've just run out of water and there's no way we can get through this creek, log jams, boulders just everywhere like you see behind me. So we can't, we can't paddle any longer. So we're gonna have to portage, which is not fun. You coming, Ted? Yep. And Dad is just taking forever at these portages, man. While we're walking, it's okay. It's just at either end of the portage, there's just too much dilly dally. Good boy. Come up so you're close to me. Well, you took off, so. I guess I'm probably pretty bad at it too, if we're gonna be perfectly honest. I mean, we're walking on portage trails that are 8,000 years old. How cool is that? And then there's the story of the land itself. I mean, these hills you see were once mountains the size of the Himalayas in the Canadian Shield that actually eroded down and were just scoured by glaciers, which is pretty cool. And when we plan a route, we usually try to avoid them, but portages protect the wilderness and the fishing. And you're just like, why are we doing this? And all of a sudden you're getting into pristine landscapes and so the fishing is better. You know, there's more wood at the campsite. It's pretty freaking awesome. So it's always worth it. Oh, I can see the end. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh ah. you bag. We only have like a hundred meters to paddle. You know what Buck's doing right now? He's hunting frogs. Buck, are you hunting frogs over there? Come on, Buck. Come here, in the boat, to the boat. Exhausted, but not yet broken. We have done another long portage and are just about to head off on a short paddle. And then we have one more portage that's uh, longer than both of these ones. It looks like it follows like a, an old logging road or some kind of trail, but hopefully be faster. And then with any luck, we'll finish that. And we won't have to camp trail side tonight. Yay. Okay. Ready to bang this off, Ted? Yeah. Just walking along this trail, our last trip of the day, basically trying to get this portage done with before dark. And I found this, this is sweet fern. It's, a, it's not technically a fern, it's a shrub, but its leaves look kind of ferny. It's a natural anti-inflammatory. So great thing to drink when your back's broken from portaging all day. It also has a mild stimulant in it 
And the natives, the Algonquin, I believe, used to line their baskets with it when they'd pick berries because they thought that it would uh, help keep the berries fresh. And it just has an awesome smell to it. Very sweet smelling. So I'm gonna pick some more of this and um, maybe make a little tea. Yes, we've caught a break. This last portage was a piece of cake. Oh, oh that hurts so much, that bag. Oh, Thank my. God. <laughs> a grasshopper jumped in his face. Like Whoa! Oh, it's raining! Wow! This is so cool. We've just been portaging all freaking day. And right when we're about to go back for our last load, this unbelievable rainbow comes out. It's pretty much a double rainbow over there right now. And usually a sun shower doesn't last too long, but it's hammering rain right now. And we're just like held out under this white pine tree and hoping that we don't get soaked. <laughs> but this is so beautiful. Check this out, that's so cool. Talk about a reward for like, just going beast mode all day to see something like this is just incredible. Ted uh, moving a little more lackadaisically. Dude, you're just in slow mo the whole time. Why am I in slow mo? Dude, what the is the matter with you? you Find a route where we just portage and paddle up river the whole time. Oh, what are you doing? You're gonna hit a rock. That's not a rock. Yes, it is a rock, man. Just looking forward to getting to camp and putting this leg of the journey behind us. 